So as we move from dependency theory to modern world systems analysis, we can look back at dependency theory and see that three key assumptions about how countries economically develop are challenged by dependency theory. The first one is that development's an automatic process. Dependency theory shows that it is not automatic. Um, and it's not a process driven by some naturally evolving modernization. The second one is that it's not a universal process. Some countries don't move along that trajectory that US and Europe took. And third, certain alliances and social movements around particular ideologies play a bigger role than values in explaining the causal forces behind economic development. So as we move into modern world systems theory, we come to this character, Emmanuel Wallerstein. And my professor in graduate school, um, Bill Miller, was a student of Wallerstein's, and um, so I learned a lot about him from, from that professor. Anyway, Wallerstein um, sort of ran this mini empire at State University of New York in Bing Binghamton, where he argued that uh, the key unit of analysis is no longer the nation state. The key unit of analysis is really an area in the world, and, and you should think of the world as one big system, so that there's an international working class, and corporations will move from area to area um, at, uh, opportunistically to get at the cheapest forms of reliable labor for their production process. Um, and in fact, um, the proletariat is this international class of workers for whom things have always seemed to stay the same. They're always getting the shaft, no matter whether you're looking at Marx or Wallerstein. Um, and so world systems analysis makes a few contributions uh, in addition to dependency theory, but it really does have a debt to be paid to dependency theory for seeing the world as this giant system in which economic exploitation is happening on all levels all the time. One thing that world systems theory adds to the equation is it adds the idea of a semi-periphery that's sort of a cushion between the peripheral countries like Honduras and Chad and, this, and the core countries like the US and Australia. In between, you have countries like India and Brazil that are kind of brokering this exportation, outsourcing of, of a labor process. Um, and so the, this flow of resources and labor from the poor countries into the wealthier countries, and then the flow of loans and minimal payments out toward the poorer countries is sort of this two-way flow that you see in world systems analysis.